Bungalow Bill here. Let's take a quick look into our tactical perspective and then get right into some battles. So, last episode, we had a fight against the Twin Guard. I'm going to continue to push in. The Tycho and airship that I did a build series about is getting there about now. We'll make some inroads and then fight either what comes out of here or these bases themselves with that. The White Flares. We'll probably get one last ship out, and we'll continue to capture and push towards them with pre predominantly a small surface fleet. The Deepwater Guard, we fought the Barracuda in the past episode, which took most of the resources out of the airship gantry, but they still have some left. Oh, they just spawned in the plunder. I take that back. I was going to wait for them to spawn to crossbones, but it looks like we'll fight the Pequod, then the plunder, and then soon after, we will engage them themselves. However, I do want to cut them off from the Onyx Watch as best as I can so that I can get as much of the Deepwater Guard territory as possible. And that's sort of the same idea with the White Flares, is that I want to capture most of this territory myself Moving out. so that the Grey Talons or Lightning Hoods don't get these gathering points instead of me. And the same with the Twin Guard, one of the reasons I'm moving so slow. Anyway, let's hop right into this short battle, and then we'll give the we'll give a quick fight against the plunder after that as well. So in theory, these vehicles are supposed to be anti-submarine. I do have a few small tweaks to them, and I haven't retrofitted these, but it's nothing terribly significant. If we haven't killed it yet, let's take a look. I'm holding the fire on one of them by accident. So we've seen the Pequod before, submarine, APS. I think it only goes underwater to go under enemy vehicles and launch these mines. Otherwise, I think it stays towards the surface. Let's check. Respectable firepower, although it is deep water guard firepower, which is sort of like Monopoly money. And its mines may not be able to hit us, but they also might. We might fly into them. It looks like its fire is probably fast enough on its APS that if it can actually aim at us, it can probably hit us. I probably stopped our other Darning Needle from firing during the beginning, so it's going to wait another 10 seconds to engage. We didn't quite get the pitch down. I might have to make that a little bit more generous. It looks like when a low enemy is too close to us, we don't pitch down quite enough. But we're still getting some nice hits. It did not launch its mines. Depending on the magnet range, it might have been able to get us if it had mines going. But I suppose it wants to be pretty pretty safe with those because launching mines straight up is dangerous business. You can things can really go quite badly. Here we are, the plunder has made it towards us. We have two darning needles and a thunder shock at our command this time which is a little bit more than we had against the more expensive Barracuda, but it's still cheaper than the Plunder, quite a bit less volume, and I think the material load of the Plunder must be quite high. 90,000, that's quite a lot for this type of vehicle. I do think that the AI outfits many of its vehicles with way too many materials, which hamstrings it quite a bit. Nice, nice, just just deep water guard things. The classic metal bulkheads that go, don't go all the way up. The AI that is, fortunately, it appears to be sitting on material storage, not ammo, so like that's way better than normal. Turrets in gigantic turret wells with no real protection. The ones I'm putting in my new battleship, the Hull Breacher, are, they're also not going to have, have protection on them, but it has way more belt armor and spall liners and stuff, and they'll have additional deck armor over them. Alright, it looks like it's turning its AA and cram cannons against the Darning Needles, which is quite, quite difficult to score a hit on. It does look like it has timed cramps though, and its flak is actually scoring hits. It got 2% down. I took a 
I took my eyes off of it for a second when I hit the wrong key on my keyboard. That's a little bit unfortunate. It's, it's, yep, took a lot of wing blocks out there. It looks like we're still operating. Missiles coming in as well. Relocked onto the Thundershock when the Darning Needle took a quick turn. Definitely not flying as well as it used to be now that it's at 94%, but it is flying. So, plunder much better anti-aircraft capabilities than the Barracuda. Probably just a much better ship in general. These missiles look like they're actually quite good as far as deep water guard missiles are concerned. And it's definitely doing it's definitely better for it to shoot against the the darning needles than the thunder shocks because because the thunder shock lambs are just going to be too good against something like the plunder. All right. Looks like we've still got all of our particle cannon going on that craft despite the damage. Check out the plunder. It still has still has reasonable firepower, but it's not not the best. My my camera work is definitely slipping there. And there we go. Well, go for better camera work next next fight. I haven't been haven't been touching this keyboard in a few days. As is usual, the Onyx Watch is capturing Deepwater Guard territory without ever having fought a battle. Now, if we were in the old system, I would immediately declare war on the Onyx Watch and kill this ship. It is not really in my power to do that at the moment, so I will just have to let them take what they can. But their time will come. You know, I haven't seen one of these in a while, a flying squirrel. So... It'll be fun to shoot at one. Hopefully this will end fast enough that I won't get off the capture zone. I don't think that these missiles are actually capable of hurting me. I'm not sure I've ever looked carefully at the flying squirrel. Okay, so that does explain their explosiveness. I do do kind of see what they're going for here with the flying squirrel thing. Perhaps our detection could be slightly better, but that still worked. It looks like while I was fast forwarding, the twin guard have popped out a nest of bees and a manticore. They probably could have done slightly better than that, but that is what they have decided to do. So this will this will be probably a little bit one-sided, but this is the first time that we have ever put the Tycho into a campaign battle. So, I have made our colors slightly more pastel. Uh, we now come with an accoutrement, which is held with the docking station here. I wanted to have like a little cradle here for it, but the reamer is a little bit too fat for me to figure out how to make that look good. And the cradle itself is a little hazardous for its own health. I might be able to figure something out out of just decorations, but haven't done that at the moment. Otherwise, nothing has really changed since the build videos, and I believe the manticore is what we killed earlier. Looks like it. It is probably not going to react well to rail fire. I won't pull the reamer. Let's just let it hit. It's still at 100% health. That's really surprising. I was expecting us to have hit it with a rail shell by now. Looks like our Sea Wiz was shooting down some rockets. I see your missile interceptors have as well. Oh, that was a that was a big hit. It looks like that Sea Wiz hit dead center, and our enemy is AI dead, so we're being recalled. Or their despawnings are being recalled. That looks good to me. We will call the Dandelion our flagship because I like it, even if it's not not the strongest vehicle. Double check the nest of bees, which I believe is quite explodey. Like, 
a lot of these crafts tend to be. Lots of laser firepower. Daddy blades. Lights. Presumably this is not decorative and this is an actual laser optic with AI, laser components. Definitely very delicate. These much shorter won't really have the same power at distance, but still probably do a respectable amount of damage. And yeah, it's just frying. Frying our APS. Well, I said that, but we snuck a few in, and if we fire off our missiles successfully, we're not taking much damage in return, we might be able to slip even more, even more through. It looks like we're not taking damage from, from their missiles, and once our missiles come in, it should give us some APS damage for a while as well, before... Oh, the volume went down and we spawned in a ramming vehicle. Yep, that was painful. It took some damage in return, but uh, definitely, definitely worth it. All right, here's how things have progressed in White Flare's territory. We're basically capturing everything except for this resource point with a Gorgon on it, or every resource point except for this one. So. It's fine with me if the Lightning Hood scoop up the rest, so I think it's time to engage the Gorgon. Now, we have a quite the small fleet here compared to the Gorgon. Oh, I also added two more Darning Needles to it, so it's not that small, but we'll see how this goes. There is an additional Tycho coming in here, but we're going to go for the smaller fight first. I should probably engage from a slightly closer distance. I do think that the these craft would benefit from a closer engagement, but too late for that. Let's see what happens. Let's take a look at my fleet, take a look at their fleet. We have seen the Gorgon before in the previous campaign, but you may not have seen that. So we'll take a look at it. Here we are on the Lungfish. We've brought in a Darning Needle, a Reamer, a Thundershock, and an additional Darning Needle. The Longfish is the only one that can probably actually tank a reasonable amount of damage from the Gorgon. I have not actually investigated what these APS are made of, uh, but I believe they can be, be quite nasty for smaller vehicles. Now, depending on where we hit it, we um, may meet mixed success with our Ramming Craft. This is going to get significantly harder if our ramming craft does not do well. Let's see. Um, these are probably not, that's probably not desired behavior. They missed the first target. They're probably not going to hit anything. So we have lost a significant portion of our rams because we've been taking incoming incoming APS fire. We're now at 94%. Yeah, well, at least we did some damage first. We probably hit one of their rams, though. Well, at least their missiles probably won't be that good against us. Oh, their torpedoes will actually be able to hit. I forgot to put torpedo poppers on the lungfish. I just took damage. Still not a lot of damage yet, but the enemy's only down to 97. This fleet may not have been enough. We'll see. Their APS, much higher shell speed, definitely able to hit us productively. Oh, you can see we have two different, two different darning needles. There's not much difference other than the, API, than the AI and a little bit of paint. Oh, we lost our vehicle. Oh, this is the old version that doesn't have enough EMP protection. Yeah, well, such is life, I guess. I should have retrofit that. But I did not. I fixed it outside the campaign after it 
had some issues the last time it got hit by EMP. Uh, didn't didn't actually fix that one. So we're down to our small air fleet. Now, 114,000 worth of armor is going to be pretty tough to kill with these weapons. And our lambs is not able to stop these these shells. We're just um, not that good in that respect. If it wasn't for the EMP, the lungfish probably would have done a lot better, but here we are. Oh well, it was a fun attempt. I'll kill it with a Tycho afterwards. So we're getting some damage through to it. We're not getting much material burn though. It's this is a very economical fortress. A lot of the enemy fortresses burn way too many materials in combat. We're getting some respectable explosive damage in against this light armor. I was really expecting a crash there. Down to 93% on the Thundershock. Yeah, the lungfish died from EMP damage with way too much health left. That was really unfortunate. I really think on that version of it, I just completely forgot to put surge protectors in. Its AI is... I, th I think its AI is also uninsulated because that was before the heavy armor change, which made it no longer give EMP protection. Actually, it's now the only thing that doesn't give any EMP protection at all. So, it's, it's a little it's a little unfortunate. The ones I spawn in in the future won't have that weakness, but, ah, well. Yeah, I don't think it's, I don't think the Gorgon's missiles can do much to us. But we have not taken away any of its firepower yet. We don't have enough real just burst damage to punch all the way through armor. So for each shot we're doing, you know, respectable damage in some places. But we're not punching through armor to get into the explodey bits. And it's just slowly chipping away at us. With the lungfish dying immediately, it, it's significantly outweighs these other crafts that are fighting it, and it can actually hit them, so... I wonder why we haven't despawned yet. Maybe I'm keeping it alive. I don't see the text suggesting that, though. I feel like this should be despawning. It, it should have done a lot more damage this fight. Something caused a lot of lag there. Well, the Thundershock's down now too, so now it's just the Darning Needles. Their dodginess will probably make them more resilient than the Thundershock, even though they're significantly less tanky. Yeah, those, those missiles are not agile enough. We might have taken a small amount of frag damage, but that's it. This, this may be a very long fight. I might have to cut the rest of it out. We might be having some trouble there. These don't have the most redundancy, so if some of our interior control surfaces get destroyed, which is probably what happened there, uh, they are not going to behave that well. I think we just chain reacted some guns slightly. Yeah. They don't fully chain react, but they, they will have lost a reasonable amount of power. Nah, yeah, down to 157. Well, that's something at least. So I'm not aboard the Darning Needles healing them, but they do have one repair bot and one repair tentacle, so... Very slow regeneration ability. Reasonably fast if they get near each other. Still way, way less cheesy than the Twin Guard. There's just so much useless metal on here that if we're not shooting the turrets, we're not getting anything done.
Sometimes I, sh I sort of wonder if fortresses should have a a material discount. Like if there should be a material like concrete or something that you can only use on fortresses. Give them some sort of purpose. Be hard to balance though, and there was the post recently on Reddit and and on Discord about how Brilliant Skies is moving on to their next thing. It's not they didn't make it clear what kind of work they'll still be doing in From the Depths. It'd be really nice if they leave a team of, you know, two people or so with some amount of vision who are kind of dedicated to it to finish it up, because I feel like they got it like 95% of the way there. And someone just sort of needs to push it across the finish line. That they didn't really have a lot of focus recently. With no strong leadership, which is you know, to be expected. I'm not criticizing criticizing Nick for prioritizing family because that was definitely justified. Well, we killed it. I saw us take out those turrets, but I didn't realize we had reduced it to that little health. We must have done some critical damage somewhere that I completely missed. Well, congratulations, Darning Needles. Just from their erratic flight, they kind of seem to be my only small aircraft that actually does anything. Not that Thundershocks are bad, but you won't get that far with blimps. You could also make the Darning Needles way better with some tweaking, but I kind of like how they are now. The corruption, delusions, and psychosis as the fanatical white flares has been put to an end. Worship of the flayed god can only be found in darkened corners hiding from the light. Never again will this evil cult of lunatics bring fear and suffering to the people of High Lorham. To many here, you are a liberator, bringing freedom of, of religious diversity to the masses. But to others that worship the flayed gods, you are nothing but the demon that destroyed a thriving culture. Well, if I kill everyone else, there won't be anyone to complain about that either. Also, I'm going to bring the light everywhere. That's, that's just what's going to happen. What we have here are two Darning Needles and one Thundershock versus the airship Gantry, which launches this thing, uh, the Falkenheim, I believe. I don't think I've ever taken a look inside of it. I don't really know what I was expecting. Oh, look, ACBs. I never watched this go in and out of combat, but it looks like those doors open. And rather than hinging them at the bottom, they have a hinge here and a long arm, so they kind of kind of swing out. That's kind of cool. Now the Deepwater Guard really have to explain what their airship is doing in my gantry. Let's unpause. So the Thundershock engages immediately. We're taking some light anti-aircraft fire from the Falkenheim. And yeah, well, it's lucky it kept this turret given how exposed we saw it was. These one, so, um, these darting needles do not have altitude set relative to enemy, so they sit low and have to dart up. The newer, the newer version will fly level with the Falkenheim with, or at least it'll operate within a minimum to maximum elevation bracket, but try to remain as level as possible with the enemy. So it won't have to do that tilt up as aggressively. And it should should make it a bit more reliable when it turns towards the enemy. Oh man. That's... That's flying maybe a little bit too low. Over water, it feels pretty safe. It can pull itself back out. Over land, that is asking for trouble. It's like whatever the opposite of Icarus is. See a nice trail of block confetti in the background. I don't think there's anything here that can particularly engage against us. Oh, whatever that hit was not particularly good for the Falkenheim. 
Hopefully at one point they'll put outlines around the letters. I think that was AI dead. I didn't see the AI core when I did the walkthrough, but it was probably almost as exposed as that weapon. Oh man. Yeah. Um, well, that, that was a pretty good hit. I'll have to put it in the land designer in the future and make sure I can get that to not happen. Oh, it's, it's so sad. Yeah, that, that just makes me feel so sad watching that. Also, I really don't want to have to watch the Thundershock kill the airship gantry by itself. Engaging now. Engaging I should use the Q menu instead, but um, it can be difficult at times because it flails the camera around sometimes. Oh, it's going to hit again. Oh no. Oh, oh man. Oh, I mean, these aren't as important, but that's, it's just, it's so sad. Huh, I can see the block build outline. I guess because it's being healed. Oh no, oh, oh. I'll stop looking at that. Oh, are we doing it again? No. This one seems to be... It has its shit together. Well, always find more stuff in, in campaign mode. Especially because I don't test over land in the designer very much. I kind of expected that this would be a problem, but I wasn't really worried about it that much, and I probably should have been. Well, I really wasn't worried about it that much just because they're not very expensive. Which will make the next playthrough after this one, which will probably come in quite a while, so I might change my mind by the time I get to it, that I'm thinking of doing a little bit more interesting because this kind of stuff will happen a lot more often. Because I'm thinking about doing one where I have to build everything in the campaign mode and I'm not allowed to bring in prefabs or sub-objects that I've made from outside of it. So there will be a lot of very derpy, very derpy creations because they'll all go in with absolutely no testing. But it'll also sort of show off for some of the viewers who haven't played From the Depths as much, how quickly you can slap together something that works if you're not trying to do anything fancy. Well, we finally chewed through that armor and we now own the resource ring under the airship gantry. It was, of course, natural that this battle was going to follow the last one. Here we have the Davy Jones Outpost, the Rapier, and a Corsair. We're bringing in two Dandelions and the Reamer, which we'll be sitting on, of course. Hmm. Hmm. Not just that it says infinite, but I don't believe these things exist anymore. The presence of this box suggests that the Deepwater Guard are aware of in-game mechanics, and they may also have teleportation technology. After spending about 15 minutes looking through Davy Jones' outpost, I can only assume it was made by a crazy person. Let's just blow it up. I believe the Reamer prefers firepower over block count. Oh, that side impact is probably not good for us. Looks like we took some damage. Yeah, about 6%. The dandelions, however, are probably going to kill the outpost. Total of about 7% getting through. One of the dandelions took a little bit of damage. We're probably going to... Nope, we're going for the outpost. Oh man, we just chopped right through there.
I feel like kind of like a chest burst through there. The Reamer has taken some pretty considerable damage. You can see into the guts of it a little bit now. Definitely not, not performing at 100% right now. Down to 56% and there it goes. Well, it still performed admirably. Despite from the depths getting deprioritized, I don't have anything selected. Please kill the Corsair. As much fun as this is, it can't shoot back. Even though from the depths is getting deprioritized over Brilliant Skies next thing, I do hope that they do whatever it was they were doing with collisions. Then I would like to show off some of the things that you can do with ramming vehicles because I was messing around with rams a bit and they can get they can get really degenerate. I don't think I would ever use any of the particularly degenerate strategies in the campaign, but I might show them off anyway. You can you can make ramming vehicles that cost 10,000 and we'll cut the mech in half in seconds. There's really no limit to the amount of damage you can do with simple rams. Pirates, the scum of Neater's waters. They're greedy thieves that care nothing for the world, nor care for those that they steal from and hurt. The four pirate lords of the Deepwater Guard have each surrendered to save their own filthy skins. Uh, that's not going to go well for them. Protectors of Arawak, they called themselves, but they grew rich standing on the backs of the poor and gave nothing back. Hanging them would be too quick, too merciful, and if they were dead, they couldn't tell others of their downfall. But other... Other people could tell them about their downfall. No, the pirate lords will work off their debt to the people. They will till the fields, dig the wells, and build the homes under the watchful eyes of the armed guards until their debt is paid. When the day will come has yet to be decided. There's a burning fire within your eyes that the one who betrayed you, Captain Sal, is dead in the water where he belongs. There's a burning fire within your eyes that the one who betrayed you, Captain Sal, is dead in the water where he belongs. That, that doesn't quite work grammatically. Anyway, where he belongs for what he did. Piracy can be expected to end in due time, but you still have a mission to accomplish. That's because the pirates are dead. I, they're definitely dead. Your quest cannot stop here. Choose your next target and bring forth the winds of change. Definitely a little bit dated, and please rewrite this line. Also, don't choose my decisions for me. I am actually just murdering all of the pirate lords. Well, it's not murder because it's during wartime and I don't recognize their surrender. Listening. All right, Thanatos, death comes for you. Looks like some sub vehicles or something spawned and we didn't quite get everything in because I see some bounding boxes. Uh, must have been Thanatos itself that didn't spawn. So we probably took the first few shots at the foundry instead. Let's unpause it for a second and see if it's not in deep water guard colors. There we go. Looks like we put a few through and throughs on the foundry and our hollow point head hit as well. Looks like it's got a few shields, which might be a little bit of an issue for us. We'll see. We're at a bit of a long range for our base bleeder rounds. But if our AP rounds detonate inside, our AP frag or HPHE, we should do some pretty nasty damage. Oh, and there's also this. Uh, this one's a little bit different than the last version that we saw. Something something special may or may not happen. Looks like we haven't taken appreciable damage. I'm not sure that the Thanatos can really fight 
at quite this range with this APS. We should be closing a little bit though. Oh, oh, we might have just hurt the reamer a bit. Nope, it's still good. Oh, we went all the way through. Nice. There are, of course, no thermonuclear weapons aboard the aboard the Reamer. That device is only there, of course, for um, navigational purposes. It in no way violates international protocol. Now, in theory, we can destroy submarines with the Tycho. In practice, we may not be able to. We've taken one percent damage. So it did at least, it at least hit us. It met the minimum qualifications for a fight. Looks like it chopped straight through the neck of one of our turrets, which is understandable. The armor on these is basically non-existent. It might be worth the cost to give it a little heavy armor goiter to stop that from happening. Or maybe just like a little piece of ERA in the front to delete the first kinetic shell that comes through. This this may prove difficult. There's a reason that we have a fire firing computer. Oh, we're changing paint colors. Oh, this is not optimal. All right, let me look under my microphone at the keyboard. Excellent. We should be able to see these. We're dropping sonar buoys, but it seems like our our ability to find them with the sonar buoys is quite poor. I will be making more submarines in the future, so my underwater detection capabilities should increase to some extent. I do still, once I'm done with the capital ship, I'm making plan on building the sister ship to the Taika, which will be a submarine. Probably a bit too large to have in a battle at the same time as her, but you know. All right, now that we've brought death to Thanatos, we will bring death to the Disorder of Ares. By doing this, we are probably going to be losing this one resource zone of the Twin Guard. The Steel Striders are going to snap it up. I am of the opinion Listening. Moving out. that you shouldn't have to capture all these tiles. There are just way too many tiles on a map. Instead, that there should be some sort of system with points of interest where you'd have, you know, a point of interest here and it would control this whole area. Maybe break up the tiles by that sort of system. And you just have to capture this one place and it gives you all of this stuff. And the same for this and that sort of thing. That way the AIs also wouldn't have to try to defend all of this empty space. They could focus on just defending the points of interest. Also just to make things way less tedious for a player. The... The worst thing, well, maybe the worst thing, but if you play through the campaign multiple times, one of the worst things is just having to capture all the time. I probably spend 50 to 60%, maybe even more than that, of the time that I spend playing just capturing tiles. Uh, this, isn't, this isn't an RTS game. I'm not playing the Zerg where all that I do is like, creep tumors the entire time and just rally my army into the enemy base. Well, naming yourself after the gods is pure hubris, at least if, you know, defying the gods is hubris, then um, naming yourself after the gods is certainly, certainly something else. All right, those lasers aren't doing very much to us. Definitely some big internal explosions somewhere there. Because there's no other way that we could have 500,000 explosive damage. So the fact that... 
we put some of our main gun rounds into the foundry is interesting. I can sort of see us putting the Siwa's rounds into it, because I think it might prefer small targets, although that might be a mistake. It should probably just prefer close targets regardless of the size. Looks like these AP rounds are probably... Oh yeah, they're they're doing really good here. Except for the ones that go through. I still think it's better to overpen than underpen though, so I don't set penetration depth fuses on them. Is it not transferring materials? It has materials, but it doesn't seem to be transferring them. So none of these drones can actually do anything. That's a little unfortunate. The Eris itself is down to no firepower. We took some damage though, our glass is a little broken. We kind of have a few battle scars and stuff, at least in the less important areas. We're still at full firepower though. Well, here lies the twin guard and the end of the episode. Starting the next one, we'll start to get into some meteor factions like the Steel Striders and the Grey Talons and such. and. Everyone except for the Scarlet Dawn and the Steel Striders has just been sitting on the resources the entire time. So once I get into the next meeting, which I'm going to do ahead of the full six hour schedule that was set at the last one, they could burp out some very expensive units and they could build anything. The Lightning Hoods could just go straight to the Candela. The, I wouldn't be surprised if the Steel Striders could afford a Megalodon at this point. Maybe not quite that much, but they'll have a lot. So, we'll see. Though the twins often spoke of peace and striving to integrate and finding a small place to call their home for their children on Neater, they were still machines. And you can never trust a machine to become fully sentient, can you? This is, of course, the... Well, I suppose this was written with Rambot perhaps being a machine, but there's also the question of whether or not we are sentient. Your decision to unplug them could be seen as good for the world or bad for it. You prevented what could be a world domination by artificial intelligence, or a world now in shadows with the most intelligent of robotics now silenced. Of course, the, I had little choice. I had to fight a war. No matter how you look at it, Eris must thank you for ending her suffering due to the virus she was implanted with years ago that left her crippled. Thanatos may not thank you for ending him, but he would like to see his sister AI now at peace, even if you must join her for companionship in the artificial afterlife. Oh, and... One final thing, before I end the episode, I'd like to show off the tactical map one last time so you can see what has changed since the last episode. Of course, since the Deepwater Guard has fallen, oh, it looks like we have some rendering issues, so we're not rendering all of our craft, but since the Deepwater Guard has fallen, we have spread nearly all the way through their territory and are racing against the Onyx Watch to capture the rest. But we will have the most significant portions and we've established a resource hub where we are collecting the resources which i may then ship back to my central resource hub or i may keep isolated i am th currently thinking of linking all of these resource hubs up so that i can build some massive capital ships a little bit earlier or i might leave them separated and spawn in fleets of smaller ships that are closer to the enemies similarly the white flares have been completely destroyed, and we are just finishing up a little bit of capture. Also, the Twin Guard are no longer present, and we're just trying to capture as quickly as we can, and I'm hoping, although it may not happen, to get to this resource zone. So far, I don't see anyone really rushing in for neutral territory, at least the Lightning Hoods haven't yet, and the Steel Striders haven't yet, so maybe they'll just let me take it all, that would be a big difference. But 
based on the time until the next council meeting, it looks like, because I think it was six hours total, it looks like we're about two hours in. So I expect in the next council meeting, because of all this territory that we have, we're going to have to fight everyone. And that means... Oh, actually, I think the Grey Talons have just been saving up. Usually they fight the Scarlet Dawn a bit and have to actually spend this. We're going to fight expensive craft on on every single front. Oh, yeah, this is this is going to be a lot. I'm just going to, before the next one, do a bit of logistics, construct a few more vehicles, station a perimeter, and I'm going to go to the meeting early. I'm not going to spend four hours just milking, milking the Golden Trench. Anyway, I hope you all had a good holidays or continue to have a good holidays if you have time off until or through the new year. I hope you all enjoyed watching and I hope to see you in the future.